Today, I will be discussing the benefits of, a, of 3D network visualization tools in general, but more specifically, I'm going to demo a tool called SkyRails, as Laura just pointed out. But first, I am going to start with spreadsheet. <laughs> um, this spreadsheet already has my data set that I'm going to use for uh, the SkyRails presentation, but you could already see it's pretty hard to uh, see any of the patterns here. I've anonymized the nodes, so uh, it's pretty hard to see all the patterns. So what I did from here is export the data into a 2D visualization tool called Gephi. Okay, so this is a little bit more detailed. So you could already start to see um, the node clusters and the level of interconnectivity between the node clusters now. Um, since it's visual, you could actually understand it a little bit more than the spreadsheet, but it still suffers from what I like to call spaghettification, <laughs> where it looks like you just threw spaghetti on the screen. Um, so it's difficult to target the specific trends because of a lot of the overlapping edges. The links are called edges and the little dots are called nodes. So in this situation, I think a tool like SkyRails can take the visualization up to the next level. So. Hold on just a second, let me get SkyRails loaded. Okay, let me start with a large data set. Okay, gonna have to drive a little bit. Takes a little bit of time to bake. Um, while it's, uh, while the, uh, the algorithm is uh, um, calculating, I'll go over a little bit of the history of SkyRails. It was created um, in 2008 by Yosh Wijada for his PhD thesis at the University of South Wales in Sydney, Australia. Um, this specific data set I'm using consists of around 4,000 nodes and uh, about 6,000 edges. Um, this layout algorithm is similar to the one that I just showed you in Gephi, where it, what it basically does is it clusters the most highly connected nodes together into communities of nodes, and then it pulls them apart so that it, it's more visually appealing. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. All right, so you can navigate in 3D space. I'm gonna put a little curve. Okay, so this is basically a 3D version of what I just showed you in Giphy. And I'm controlling the camera movement with the mouse, and it's kind of like a first person shooter game if you've ever played any of those. I've separated the network into three different categories, um, red, blue, and purple. Um, red being the largest category, purple being in the middle, and blue being the smallest category. So you can click on nodes. Oop. It's gonna zoom back in, I promise. <laughs> you can zoom in on nodes, rotate around. Um, but even at this level, it's kind of still spaghetti. It's just 3D spaghetti. Um, so what you could do is you could dynamically change the layout by what I did was I, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to separate the network into three different planes on the y-axis based off of those three categories I just mentioned. So top down. So from this view, you could really focus on the cross connections between the different types of nodes. So for example, if this was a social network and you wanted to see which one of the purple nodes, the blue nodes used to communicate to the red nodes, um, let's see if we could find a good example. All right, this blue node right here is pretty well connected to these purple nodes which are then pretty well connected to these red nodes down here. And if I zoom out a little bit, hold on just a second, I have to drive. You could kind of clearly see the areas of um, less influence for the blue nodes as compared to say the, the purple nodes. So this area right here only has this guy right here. Whereas it's a lot more interconnected over here. Uh, let me zoom down to the red. And no matter how far away I could just click on this one, it'll 
zoom in on it. Okay. I could also show a, diff a little bit of a different layout. Um, if I wanted to focus on which one of the red nodes are the most interconnected, I could flip it a little bit like this. Okay, so now the red nodes are san sandwiched in between the blue and red nodes, I mean the blue and purple nodes. So let's see if we could find some pretty good, well-connected red nodes. Well, a lot of the red nodes are connected, but okay. You can see this purple node right here is very well connected to a lot of different nodes in the network right here. Okay. So this is an example of a somewhat large data set. So what I've also done is I've created a, a mock enterprise network. So this is basically a company I created. <laughs> this little cloud right here represents the internet. So this network has firewalls. It's an internet router here, web servers, network router. Here, here are the desktops, and the white nodes are the laptops. And in this layout, I can also take advantage of the 3D space that SkyRails has by assigning different attributes to the end user nodes. Uh, just a second. So as you can see, hold on, zoom out a little bit. As you can see, some of these yellow nodes are a bit lower than these other yellow nodes. Now this could represent anything from CPU usage to login attempts or bandwidth, whatever you want. You could also take advantage of different uh, dimensions basically. You, you couldn't really do this in TD, 2D, or if you, if you did, it would be more cumbersome. And finally, what you could also do, uh, let me just reset the layout real quick. You could also um, clump nodes together in um, circle categories. So this would be the DMZ right here. Here's the, here's the rest of the network. Here are the desktops, the laptops, and the servers. And what I've effectively done is create 3D Venn diagrams. So if you wanted to ask yourself which one of the switches is the most connected to the laptops, it's obviously switch three right here. Or if you wanted to ask yourself which one of the servers is most connected to the desktops, it's this proxy server right here. And you could run like simulations, you could highlight all the links connected to this proxy server. Hold on a second. Um, finally, SkyRails itself can become a, a server on your network. A lot of these tools have this capability where you could automate this process where you don't have to, I built a lot of this, but you don't have to have a physical human being building it. Say you wanted to add um, five mobile devices to your network and you pre-configured SkyRails or whatever data visualization tool you wanted to use, it'll just pop up like that. So there's, there's five little mobile devices connected to your network through the cloud. So that was my quick demo of this 3D visualization tool. Oh, it finally turned red. <laughs> there we go. Um, and as Laura pointed out, I, I feel like this could be very useful for large data sets for technical users because a lot of the 2D visualization, it has a lot of overlap, so it's harder to see in detail what you're trying to find, like the hidden signals in a large data set. But also non-technical users can use this because they could appreciate whatever network they're on a little bit better. Like for example, if everyone in Ida could visually see the Ida's uh, network in three dimensions, they could simulate things, they could play around, maybe they pay more attention to those um, cyber awareness emails they get. <laughs> <laughs> so um, with that, I'll take any questions.